Welcome back to part 3 of our favourite campsite series. This video is all about our favourite national park campsites. It's all but impossible to select just 10 top national park camps because there's just so many good ones available. We've done our best and come up with a list that we think are 10 of the best sites. But because there are so many excellent sites available, we've added a couple more that we really just can't leave out. National Park campsites generally have some basic rules and conditions that campers have to follow. Where campsites are located inside national parks, then pets are not permitted. Some parks that are operated by the Department of Parks and Wildlife do allow pets, and these we're going to list at the end of the video. Entry fees to national parks have to be paid in addition to any overnight camping fees. You can reduce the cost of this by buying a park pass. Generators are not permitted at all national park campgrounds. We include information here on this where we have been able to verify it on the national parks website. Fires are generally not permitted from November to April each year. No fires of any kind are permitted during total fire ban days. This includes gas stoves. Always watch for local signs about campfires and please obey all fire restrictions. Always remember to put campfires out with water. Covering them with sand just doesn't do the job. Starting at number 10 is Yanchip National Park. This is one of the most urbanised of our national parks. It's located in what will soon become a major suburban area and is one of the most popular parks because of its close proximity to the metropolitan area. Attractions in the park include exploring the cave system, lunch or drinks at the inn and relaxing at one of the many picnic areas or walking around the lake or on many of the walk trails that are available here. This park is unlike many national parks that were established in the late 20th century. The original intent of the park seems to have been to act as a place of entertainment for people rather than for the preservation of nature. Established gardens and stone buildings are not often seen in modern parks. Today there is much more emphasis on preserving and observing the natural environment. The campsite has been developed at Henry White Oval, which is now looking much less like an oval than it did when the campsite first opened. A new camp kitchen is available and new ablution blocks have also been constructed. Campsites range from grass to bitumen. For some reason we cannot fathom, generators are only permitted on the bitumen sites even though they're just a matter of yards away from some of the grass sites. Dogs are not permitted in the park and prior bookings must be made before arrival. Facilities include toilets, showers, a camp kitchen and a dump point for black water. The next site on our list is Conjolin. There are now two campsites at Dryandra Woodland, which is northwest of Narragin. Conjolin is the older of the two sites. It's smaller but more attractive than its new near neighbour, Nalamaya. There are toilets, a shelter with seats and tables, barbecues, fire rings, and a small water tank. Water quality and availability can vary though. Dogs are not permitted at Dryandra Woodland campsites and you currently need to book to reserve a site. Generators are not allowed at this site. Things that attract campers to the Dryandra area include wildflowers, wildlife and a night tour of Barnamaya Animal Sanctuary, which is very popular indeed.
In at number 8 comes Canebrake Pool. This campsite is located in the Margaret River area and can be accessed from Margaret River via Osmington and Canebrake Roads or from Busselton via Chapman Hill and Canebrake Road. The road in is unsealed and usually the one coming from Margaret River can be very corrugated. Access from Busselton can be a lot smoother. Facilities include toilets, seats, tables, fire pits, and there may be a skip bin at the campsites for campers to dispose of rubbish. Firewood is sometimes made available here, but can only be burned outside fire restriction periods. The pool is very pleasant to swim in during the warmer months, but care should be taken, and you should not dive into any natural pool, as there may be hidden obstacles under the water. The pool is home to the critically endangered hairy marin. These are fully protected and must not be disturbed in any way. The site is run by the Department of Parks and Wildlife, but even so, dogs are permitted at this campsite. At present, this campsite cannot be booked, and it is available on a first-come, first-served basis. There are seven campsites available and an overflow area that will accommodate a few extra campers. Most sites are large enough to accommodate caravans. Generators are not permitted at this campsite. Next comes Stokes Inlet. This campsite is located on the south coast, 81 kilometres west of Esperance. Access is via Stokes Inlet Road. The campsite area has been redeveloped and now has 14 sites. Site sizes will suit any kind of vehicle and are much larger than in many national parks. Campsites are all secluded, but there's not much shade. There are two camp kitchens and two toilet blocks and boats can be launched from either the campsite or from the day use area three kilometres to the south. The estuary is the largest of its kind in the area and is the only one with reasonably deep water, up to 10 metres. Care should be taken when boating as water levels can vary and there are hidden underwater obstacles in some places. Fishing, swimming, bird watching, kayaking and walking are the popular pastimes at this site. There is a four kilometre heritage walk that will take you from the campsite to the day use area. Dogs are not permitted here and facilities include shelters, seats and tables, toilets and barbecues. Generators are currently allowed at Stokes Inlet. And at number six we get to Colseum Reserve. The reserve is located one hour's drive southeast of Geraldton, or 30 kilometres from Minganew. The park can also be accessed from Walkaway or from Mullawar. There are two campsites at the park, Miners and Breakaway. Breakaway is now used as an overflow site during peak periods. New toilets have been installed and the main campsite has been expanded. There is plenty of room for caravans and access is via a good gravel road, although some sections are quite steep. The name originates with the discovery of coal next to the river, but the coal turned out to be poor quality and mining did not last very long. Access roads can be closed during periods of high rainfall. The area is really beautiful in wildflower season and it's an important habitat for native flora and fauna. Facilities include barbecues and toilets. 
a maximum of a three-night stay is all that's allowed during peak periods, which last between July and October. Dogs are not allowed at this campsite. Next on our list is Logebrook Dam. This is also known as Lake Brockman and is located in the hills just northeast of Harvey. Access is from the Southwest Highway and Logebrook Dam Road. There is a caravan park by the lake and it works in partnership with the Department of Parks and Wildlife to administer the new campsite. There are boom gates at the campsite entrance so you will have to book in advance. You can look at the sites before booking, but you need to check with the office to see if the site you want is available before moving in. Dogs are allowed at this site. There is washing water, a camp kitchen, seats, tables, pit toilets and barbecues. There is also a black water dump point, but you may need to get a key from the office before dumping waste. During the week, the lake is usually nice and peaceful, but on weekends expect water ski boats and a lot more people and noise. There are not many sites with lake views, so they will be the first to go during peak times. Different sections of the campsite are designed for different types of campers. Zamia Camp is set aside for groups. Carrack is for tents. Miller's has the largest sites and is probably best suited for caravans and motorhomes. And Bunaroo and Quokka are good general sites for smaller vehicles and camper trailers. There is access to the lake from either the boat ramp near the office or down steps near site 12 in the tenting area. The campsite is quite well designed but motorhomes and camper vans will need levelling blocks on most sites. No fires are permitted from December 15th to March 14th each year and on days of total fire bans. Generators can be run from 8am to 9pm, but there is a total noise ban after 10pm. Facilities include toilets, shelters, barbecues, seats and tables. For number four on the list, we go south to the Warren River. Access to the Warren River campsites is via Heartbreak Trail. Caravans are not permitted in this area, but it is possible to take in camper trailers. The main campsite along the Warren is called Drafties. Here you'll find an excellent camp kitchen and good access to the river for swimming. Dogs are not permitted here, but generators are allowed. Facilities include toilets, seats, tables and shelters. Shelley Beach is located west of Albany. This is perhaps the most attractive campsite on the coast, but there's no access for big rigs or caravans. The site is listed as tents only, but small motorhomes do sometimes make use of the site. Check access first if you intend to go down to the site and are unsure about getting your vehicle down. 
as the road is narrow and winding. Access is initially up a very steep hill from Cozy Corner. The road into the National Park is unsealed and can be corrugated. Special hang gliding platforms at the top of the cliffs make this a very popular spot for those who enjoy the sport. The beach is a popular spot for fishing and it's certainly one of the most picturesque places on the south coast. Shelley Beach is the only easily accessible coastline in the park. Dunsky Beach and Torbay Head are only accessible by high clearance four wheel drive vehicles. The steep cliffs and breaking surf can be dangerous so stay well back from cliff edges and be aware of ocean swells if you go rock fishing. Some people think they might be able to find shells at Shelley Beach, but if you note the extra E in the name, it's named after a person, not shells. Campfires, generators, caravans and dogs are all prohibited at this site. Only tents and small camper vans with outside awnings are permitted for overnight stays. There is no booking for this site and it's on a first come first serve basis. Coming in at number two is Honeymoon Pool. This is a beautiful campsite located downstream from the Wellington Dam. Access is via Wellington Dam Road and an often corrugated, unsealed river road. There is an alternative route, however. There are two one-way roads that are sealed all the way in. The entry is via Leonard Drive. Follow the main road past Potter's Gorge and then go past Wellington Dam to a turn off over a small bridge. It's well signposted. The exit follows River Road to Pile Road. This then leads either back to Wellington Dam or to Dardanup. There is a good swimming area at the campsite with easy access to the water from a wooden platform with steps that lead down. The water here is almost always cold as it comes from the lower levels of the dam. This is very refreshing on a hot summer's day, but can be a bit of a shock to the system in any other weather. The campsite is only suitable for tents, so other types of campers need to go to the nearby Potter's Gorge. Potter's Gorge caters for just about any kind of vehicle. There are 20 campsites at Honeymoon Pool, and you need to book before you arrive. The campsites are very well shaded, so if you need solar power, you're going to have a bit of a headache here. It's a very popular campsite, so if you go on weekends or holidays, it will always be crowded and rather noisy. There are actually three campsites at Honeymoon Pool. The main campsite is on the east side of the river. Stones Brook is located off River Road, about 150 metres from the Honeymoon Pool campground. There are 17 sites and an undercover camper's kitchen. That includes free gas barbecues, a gas pot boiler, and picnic tables. Campfires are prohibited at this site all year round. The campsites are a bit more secluded and have their own tables and seats. Some even have a timber deck. The third site is Gelcoat. This is intended more for small groups of perhaps three tents all camping together. Remember, all three sites need to be booked before you arrive. Dogs are not permitted at any of these campsites. At the top of our list comes Conto Fields, usually just called Conto. This campsite is accessible from Caves Road, just south of Forest Grove Road in the southwest of the state, in the Margaret River area. It's a very large campsite with 116 individual bays. It caters for tents, caravans and small to medium sized motorhomes. The camp is about 18 kilometers from Margaret River and it fills up very quickly in peak season. 
Conto is one of those sites you need to book before you arrive. If you don't book and arrive in off-peak season, you can book at the entry station, as phone signal is available there. The campground is located close to the coast, and there are many beaches that can be reached by two-wheel drive. There is no power in the campsite, and water is limited. Toilets are mostly the long drop style, and rubbish must be taken to a large bin near the entry station. Generators are allowed at this campsite. Dogs are not permitted, however. Facilities include camp kitchens, toilets, barbecues, seats, tables and shelters. Being in the Margaret River region, Conto is ideally placed for access to the coast, the forest and all the amazing attractions available in the southwest. Other National Park campsites located in the area include Point Road, Boranup Drive, Chapman Pool and the newer site at Gerardine. There are two more areas that we really have to mention on this list. There are really many more, but we have to draw the line somewhere. The first is at Cape Range. The National Park here contains a number of different campsites with something suitable for everyone. As with most national parks, dogs are not allowed in this area. It's a very beautiful place and attractions here are based around the natural environment. The second area I want to mention is Cape Legrand. Cape Legrand has two campsites. One is situated at Legrand Bay and the other one at Lucky Bay. Both are excellent and the coastal scenery in the area is some of the best you will see anywhere. Pets aren't prohibited at all DPAW sites and for those who want to take their dog along, here is a list of sites that you can take your four-legged friends to. Big Brook Arboretum, Greens Island, Wrights Bridge, Sue's Bridge, Warner Glen, Canebrake Pool, Stockton Lake, Logbrook Dam, Lane Pool, and Maranup. Well, that's all for our favourite campsite series. If you haven't seen parts one and two, you can click on the links that'll appear near the end of this video. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up button below. And if you enjoy what we do on the channel, please subscribe and click the bell icon and you'll get notified of all our new videos. Subscribing helps us get noticed by YouTube. And as 90% of our viewers come from unsubscribed people, we would really love to increase that number. We upload a new video every Saturday and sometimes manage another one midweek. Thanks for watching and hope to see you back here again very soon. Cheers. <music>